way. T when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to provide a breakfast feast of fascinating facts, such as some dogs eat mud and some cats like to swim. This is Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Dogs eat more than mud, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> also, can I just say, that means I've won a bet. OK, is that really? Oh, yeah, I had to say dogs eat mud, and there you go. Managed to do it in the first 15 seconds. And don't forget to gamble responsibly, folks. <laughs> uh, now, uh, we've got lots to get through, as always, so let's mm -hmm. kick right off. This just broke, broke this morning. Uh, last month, the... Uh, Labour lot, we're having great fun. So we're in recession and all the economy's... Right. Well, guess what? We're out of recession. Hey, it has been announced today that uh, in January our GDP <coughs> expanded by 0.2%. Not much, but uh, <laughs> that means we're out of recession. So that recession didn't last long, did it? Kia? It was just a little drop, wasn't it? But you can't exactly pop open the champagne for 0.2%, can you? When you look at other uh, big economies in the world growing by 5%, 6%, this is sort of the equivalent of, well, you're not actually reversing, you're just creeping yeah. forward like Joe Biden going down the stairs of an airplane. <laughs> you know, well, it's well, not and then exactly falling over, yeah. dashing into the future with, uh, you know... Yeah. Actually, technically, he fell up those stairs, didn't he? Do you remember? <laughs> That's when he kept falling falling up them. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, don't uh, put the bunting out, uh, but it does prove that all the sort of negative naysayers uh, all the lefties say, oh, this government's finished, we're deeply in recession. No, we were never deeply in recession. And to be fair yeah. to Hunt and uh, Sunak, they did say, look, this will be one month, next month we'll be out. So, in a way, well yeah. done, you two. You got this one they right. right. So we're out <clears throat> of recession. Thank you very much. What might help, though, is if the 21% of working-age people who aren't working and instead claiming benefits joined us in the morning alarm and the cro crowded commute and you know, yeah. help build that economy even faster. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, nice. yeah, go back to work. Go back to work. <laughs> all these people who are mental health, bad back, you know, they're claiming benefits, not going to work. Uh, I'm sh a lot of them, very, very genuine problems, I'm not sure, but loads of them are just lazy I mean, 20, and work shy. 21%, yeah. that is mad, isn't it? In Labour are going, oh, we're going to have to get people off benefits yeah. and back into offices. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're the bone idle children of the furlough scheme, trust me. Right. Uh, now, talking of, uh, well, no, <laughs> Jobs. I, don't know, I don't know how to do <laughs> this Jobs link, actually. Uh, the it's people who shouldn't can't. go back to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Uh, you can get jobs. Uh, you can get them uh, with uh, Mayor Khan's uh, department. Uh, you can go and work for Greater London Authority. Uh, he is blowing £366,000 on six woke diversity officers. I love this. Somehow, the Greater London Authority, which employs these six equality and inclusion experts who make sure people are treated equally in an organisation by promoting positive practices and attitudes. Do you remember it was um, Sadiq Khan's? office who, when someone is producing some sort of leaflet or advertising campaign or public information thing uh, about London, he went, no, can't have that, that's an all-white family, no, can't have that, white people, they don't represent London. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, as you say, uh, the, these jobs, that's, uh, if you live in London, this is your council tax, this is where it's all going. Uh, he's spending, you know, 366000 Pounds on uh, three uh, six people with an average salary and pension pot of sixty one thousand pounds each, and uh, this is what they're going to do. Very important. They're going to make sure people are treated equally in an organisation by promoting positive practices and attitudes. Look. If you must have one guy or woman doing that job, OK, fair enough. But you do not need six. You do not need to waste our money like this. Yeah, no, one's too many because all well, OK, I'll go, I'll go along with that. Division, I'm fine they? with they that. They just see everything through the prism of race and actually create racism, as far as I can tell. Talking of in, which, talking, talking of which. Let's not let that segue go. I was going to add something else, but let's uh, 
Prism of Racism. Ta da! Yeah, right. Uh, this is the Diane Abbott race rail. Diane Abbott, of course, herself remains suspended from the Labour Party uh, for a racist letter she wrote to the uh, <laughs> Observer claiming that uh, racism towards Jews wasn't as bad as racism towards anyone else, uh, therefore anti Semitic and racist. So, ironically, she remains uh, suspended for racism, uh, but uh, she's the victim of racism uh, well, uh, by, by world famous household name Frank Hess. No, me neither. Uh, anyway, back in 2019, he did make some unpleasant remarks about her, uh, said that she should be shot and she's the sort of person that makes him want to hate all black women. Now, there's no doubt that's racist. Uh, he is a major donor to the Tory party, £10 million, pounds, the biggest donor there is. Big calls on Rishi Sunak to hand that money yeah. back. I don't think he will. But also we've got Prime Minister's questions today where Sunak will be grilled and why it yeah. took him so long to say this was racist. But look, listen to this. Look, I'm, I, I'm against racism, of course, and I don't like what this guy said. Even Diane Abbott doesn't deserve that. But this row is confected it's a Westminster nonsense. bubble Also, nonsense. the logic of the lot of this just doesn't even make sense, right? So if you're a racist, you say something racist and you've given money somewhere, then they've got to give you that money back. So does that mean if I started doing Heil Hitlers and saying all sorts of obscenities, I could get my TV licence refunded? Yeah. Does it mean that I don't have to pay tax anymore because the government's like, we don't support racism, your money's not welcome here, thank you very much. You know, the charities I give to, London Air Ambulance, well, we better give that Alex Phillips back her cash. Yeah, because she's a bit right-wing, yeah, we don't want her money. You know, first of all, whenever something's decided if it's racist or not, there's some sort of invisible judge and jury out there who makes this decision. Now it seems the same invisible judges and juries are now deciding what the punishment is. It's like this sort of fictional law courts of wokeism. I mean, yeah, Just stop it. I'm so good over phrase, racism. So well, look, over ra it. Racism, you know, racism is wrong. I abhor it. It's, it's a disgrace and it should be uh, extracted from public life. But, you know, this uh, firestorm going on in Westminster, oh, the Frank Hester in 2019 <laughs> said these horrible things. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> this is classic Westminster bubble. A bunch of MPs arguing with them Themselves. And if they think that the people in the shires and the provinces and the Midlands and the north are worried no about this, cares. it absolutely also, proves that MPs, politicians, do not understand people. Dear Labour, zero sum game because let's wait until all of your accounts are forensically analysed and let's go through every single tweet and Facebook post and private conversation and WhatsApp meme that anyone who's ever given to your party has said, done or posted. And let's see how much you end up with in the coffers. If you want to bankrupt yourselves by playing this stupid pantomime performance instead of talking about, I don't know, policies and real issues, then go ahead and exit public life stage left. Yeah, and this is the, the crux of this argument is, why did it take Rishi Sunak oh, so long to say cares? that this were, yeah. these comments were it's racist. Like, Why did it take two? You can't I mean, win. Come on. You can't win. You've got to say they're racist. You've got to say it within a certain time period. Then you've got to act in another way by demanding the money back, probably within a certain time period. I mean, it's just a constant confection. It's yeah. just mad. It is confected. This is a confected is. argument. And as I say, uh, Frank Hester, <laughs> we know who he is now. Uh, so anyway, you know, they're he, talking about another confection. He's apologised and uh, uh, Diane Abbott remains suspicious from the Parliamentary Labour Party for racism. So make of that what you will. Keir Starmer. Make of this what you will. Yeah, talking about confection, there was that uh, really interesting conversation, of course, that happened between the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, and Sir Keir Starmer in a broom cupboard somewhere in the Palace the of Reasons Westminster. Room. It's called the Reasons Room. The Reasons it's Room. It's just behind Let's the, call uh, it the Speaker's Reasons chair. Room. That apparently there's eight chairs sense. in it, but they only needed two for this meeting. Yeah, so they it? had their little meeting, and uh, Sir Keir Starmer said, look, you're going to have to allow our Labour motion on a ceasefire in Gaza, or was a ceasefire at some point with certain conditions, whatever it was, all the technicalities, because if you don't, wow, our MPs are being threatened. It's so dangerous. You'll have blood on your hands. Um, and then, of course, uh, Sir Graham Brady turned out, broke with convention and said, you can't do that. He almost lost his job. Sir Keir Starmer washed his hands of the whole thing. So he's been investigated whether he was right to do this. And apparently, no, actually, he wasn't well, he investigated. Well, he won't be investigated. It was being decided whether he'd be investigated or not and whether he then lied to Parliament. Remember the thing that did yeah. Boris Johnson in by saying, I never said this to the Speaker. 
Well, the speaker says you did, so Well, he, he basically, he stands accused of going into this reasons room with uh, former Labour speaker, former Labour MP speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, his mate, and saying, uh, uh, you better let uh, our amendment into this debate as well, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you could have blood on your hands. That's what he's accused of because the Muslim community... But then he claimed you didn't say it. Uh, no, he claimed... It. Anyway... Uh, uh, this has resulted in uh, Parliament deciding not to investigate the Labour leader. But if you remember, it uh, plunged Lin Speaker, Mr Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle into a world of difficulty. Uh, and uh, we haven't really seen him much since. He didn't even turn up for That's the budget, true. so yeah, I wonder what's going on with him. He's there for PMQs today. Well, that, that'll be very interesting. Yeah, Good we'll point. See. Let's uh, just remind ourselves of Lindsay's grovelling apology. I regret... Oh, it's ended up. It was not my intention. I wanted the all. I wanted all to ensure they could express their views and all sides of the House could vote. As it was, in particular, the <coughs> SNP were ultimately unable to vote on their proposition. I am, and I regret, with the deep... With my sadness that it's ended up on like that in this position, that was never my intention for it to end up like this. Translation, he really, really badly screwed up there. He seemed to think his job is the safety of MPs. Mm. It's not his job. I mean, we worry about the safety of MPs, but it is not the Speaker's job to change the way the House operates just to protect MPs. Mm -hmm. It is not his job. He should never have done it, and that's why he had to issue that uh, really excruciating grovelling. Do you know apology. what we haven't spoken about for a few days, Kev? What's that? Rwanda! Hey, hey, it's back. Rwanda no, time. seriously, some very good stories There's around There's some good today. Rwanda stuff well, knocking about today, folks. First of all, uh, civil servants in the Home Office uh, who will be uh, required to implement the Rwanda scheme if and when it ever gets going. Uh, they've threatened the government with legal action uh, saying that if they instigate the Rwanda scheme, uh, they will be being forced to break international law. So they're threatening yeah. legal action against, against the government yeah. to say well, to, that we will not do what we're told. They've sent a pre-action legal letter already to James Cleverly. This is the FDA union. I mean, do you know, it's just driving me mad. There's no <laughs> point having a government anymore. Let's just have lawyers decide everything. Want to protect your borders? Well, you know, some lawyer somewhere says no. Some judge in Strasbourg says no. The UN says no. Get rid of the lot of it. The whole point of Parliament is it sits there. It makes law. It votes on law and represents the people that is called a democracy but it turns out actually we don't have a democracy we have some sort of legocracy we've just got a load of lawyers most of them not even in the UK deciding what we can and can't do while the people sit there going what on earth is this about as we pay their legal fees it goes like, it's got to stop it goes like this that civil servants work for the government civil servants must be impartial uh, they just do what the government says. They, uh, they implement government policy. That's what they do. Now, a new generation of civil servants has decided they're a political body and they're going to sue the government because the government yeah. is telling them what to do. The government is supposed to tell them what to do. Well, I'd suggest you fire the lot of them. Has anyone ever asked the question, what happens when you break international law? Because yeah, yeah. a lot of countries do and, well, they just get on with breaking international law, don't yes, they? It might uh, spoil what, our reputation on the international oh, stage. Spoil the reputation. Well, the reputation on the yeah. international stage. I see that now, but we, we can't really do that. We really care about that. I lose so much sleep about that. My, meanwhile, and this, <laughs> oh, this is the big two. one. This is the big one. The Rwanda scheme, Rishi's Rwanda scheme. Mm. Will it ever get off the ground? Pretty unlikely. But he's come up with a new ruse. Uh, he's going to offer migrants who uh, agree to get on a plane and go to East Africa uh, £3,000 each. I love that. Unbelievable. But do you know what, Kat? Do you know what I was thinking? You know, this year, uh, Talk TV is uh, going through the change at the moment. Yeah. And we don't quite know what's going on. Going on, we just turn up to work, and you know, like the good uh, workhorses we are, we ah. do our job. And I'm thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind that three grand. Sunny <laughs> Let's move to Rwanda. Okay, Kevin shall. Alex, uh, the East African version. I think it'd be quite good. We so, could just set up, have a nice garden. I like it. It looks like a nice trees, country, Rwanda. Spend That's the about... weekends go gorilla spotting. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a nice place. I must it's, go yeah. and check it out for three grand. But you know, think about this. First of all, this three thousand pounds he wants to offer illegal or potentially illegal uh, migrants. Uh, who got to Britain to go to Rwanda. That's our, our money. That's oh, yeah, yeah. coming out of exactly. your pocket, taxpayers' money. So we'll suppose they all turn around and say no. What will the government do? Uh, all right, 
Five grand. And that's our final offer. Make it ten. All right, seven. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're going to offer these people money to take part in our money deportation Money for coming to this country scheme. illegally, yeah. they then get rewarded yes. with money to go to a different country. <laughs> it's just mad. And I used to live in East Africa. It's a wonderful part of the world. Gorgeous climate, pretty mm. decent nosh, amazing opportunities to go look at wildlife. I mean... Yeah. Grillers exactly. in the Mist, that was Considering in Considering how rubbish London is these days, I'm, I'm up for it. Grillers in the Mist was in Rwanda, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Rwanda, lovely place. Yep. And if you, if you come over here on an illegal dinghy, uh, the government will give you three grand to go there. Won't cost you a penny. Can't be bad. Go see yeah. the gorillas. Lovely. Maybe uh, what people should do is people actually from Rwanda should join the sort of migration flows, come to the UK, get the three grand and go home again. There you go. That, well, that's probably what they will <laughs> yeah. do. Right, uh, Biden and Trump, it looks like it is... It is the two old guys. Yep. Uh, they are uh, going to go head to head in the election. Both of them have had their nominations for their respective parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, confirmed. Uh, there are still a lot of people who think uh, Biden may well uh, try to drop out in the summer or they may persuade him to drop out. I don't think they will. This kind of ratifies what we thought that the two old guys will go head to head mm -hmm. for the presidential election in November. Yeah, and uh, what a sad day, frankly, for the world when this is the best America can do. Two septuagenarians. How old is Biden, actually? Uh, 81. 81. 81. Octogenarian. I think uh, um, Trump's 79 you know, or something. Battling it out, and most of America don't want either of them. So, yeah, again, slow clap for democracy today. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I think uh, Trump's got a lot of support, and I think... Oh, look, uh, I'm not anti-Trump. I'm just saying that I think, actually, the vast majority of well, Americans like don't better, want this. They'd like better candidates, yeah. I agree. But uh, Trump uh, certainly campaign-wise, will absolutely trounce Biden. Whether he will at the ballot box is a different issue. But you, whatever you think about Donald Trump, he is one hell of a campaigner. And unlike Biden, he's got all of his marbles. I mean, so at this point, you could probably... Be a, it's going to be a one-sided contest. You could probably wheel like Charlotte Church and she would trounce Biden. I mean, anything can trounce Biden these days. He's one of the most trounceable creatures on Earth. Yes, indeed. The uh, fossil. How are you doing there, Charlotte? From the river to the sea, eh? <laughs> uh, right, uh, Megan. Let's go to Harry and Megan now. Uh, she scored a legal victory against her sister, Samantha. Samantha was suing Megan for comments uh, made during that notorious interview with uh, Oprah Winfrey and in her Netflix series. Uh, the judge has decided in Florida uh, that there are no grounds for Samantha's uh, defamation case. Mm. Therefore, Megan lives to fight another legal battle yeah. and Samantha loses. Well, Samantha was basically saying that Meghan Markle said she grew up, grew up basically as an only child. Yeah, that's right. Suggestion she didn't that's have right. much of a relationship with her sister. And the court said, well, if that's Meghan's opinion, that's Meghan's opinion. If she says you weren't close, then she says you weren't close. But then the other a bone of contention is apparently Samantha Markle uh, changed her name from her married name back to Markle <laughs> when uh, when her uh, sister started dating Prince Harry to sort of hang on the coattails yeah, of that notoriety. And she's like, oh, that's awful, you can't say that. And the judges looked at the timing and the actual, you know, deep holes and evidence and went, uh, you did though, didn't you? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so she changed you know, her name to Markle because I think she smelt money in them. Uh, yeah. hills. And by the way, she's 59 years old. She was uh, only seeking $75,000 damages, uh, which is a very, very low amount in America, so you suspect she didn't have much confidence herself, but that is all over now. I'll tell you what isn't all over is the continuing furore about uh, the Kate uh, Mother's Day picture. Now, uh, it was according to uh, the New York Post yesterday, uh, Friends of Harry and Meghan, let it be known that this picture row would never have happened to them. Uh, a, because Meghan is very, very techno-savvy, apparently. Uh, and B, uh, because they would be very careful, because if it did happen to them, <laughs> Harry and Meghan's friends are saying, they would be annihilated. Well, I would say two things about that. It's, it's not like Kate has got off scot-free, is, yeah, is it, quite, to say the least? Exactly. And by the way, well, they're saying, oh, we would never doctor pictures like that. It would never happen to to us. A picture has emerged of the picture that Harry and Meghan had taken uh, on the occasion of, I think it was Meghan's first pregnancy. And there they are. It's quite a nice picture, black and white picture. They're lying, lying around in the background. And there's a very sort of uh, filmic tree in the background. Well, it turns out that that tree 
was photoshopped yeah, the into the bit. Yeah, so, the whimsical willow was added for a so, Fair play to uh, uh, Harry and Meghan. They photoshopped that well. But all I can say is, you know, this is just most ridiculous thing. First of all, when friends of Harry and Meghan say things, you know it's pretty much probably just Harry and Meghan because do they have any friends left? <laughs> uh, secondly, <laughs> this is from a woman, or at least in defence of a woman, whose whole life is just one giant performance. She is never out of acting mode. You know, she didn't just act when she's in suits. She's forever acting her whole life. Oh, at Harry, and she sort of puts her hand on his chest and looks at him with those sort of big doe eyes. And you're like, oh, for God's sakes, woman, yeah. you've been together three years and have two small children. You are not that love struck anymore. Yeah. Um, and it, it, did you remember that photo of them sitting in Fogmore Cottage and she's sort of sitting on the counter of the kitchen not really. laughing and he's oh, making right, a yeah, roast yeah. chicken or something? And I'm oh, like, that's right, chicken. I'm like, chicken, what? Yeah. So this uh, wonderful, ca you know, sort of candid moment. You just had, what, some photographer lurking around in the side there, did you, while you're making your roast dinner mm. to capture that moment? Well, what? You put your phone on a timer and stand they go, ready? <laughs> it's all a performance. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, uh, the Daily Mail today is asking, uh, uh, saying that uh, William and Kate, they've got to come clean. There's something going on. That's what loads of people Do you know suspect. What? So the last few days have done nothing to quell the fevered speculation yeah, well, about what exactly is going on with, me, with Kate and her husband. I went down some wormholes last night, didn't I? And uh, that Omid Scoby is frothing at the mouth to uh, spill some beans, apparently. What's so watch you this space. What did you call COVID this? Scabies. COVID scabies. Yeah, I, I like that. Right. It's, <laughs> right. it's a cross-talk favourite, isn't it? Right. You remember earlier in the week, I think it was, uh, was it beginning at uh, the end of last week, India Willoughby, trans woman, uh, was in the middle of a massive row with J.K. Rowling, because J.K. Rowling basically they called J uh, uh, India a bloke, a man. Uh, India was under the misimpression that that was a crime, a hate crime, that you can't misgender uh, a trans woman or a trans man, I suppose. Uh, but you can. It's yeah. not against the law. If I want, I wouldn't say it to India uh, because that would upset her. I, I want to keep people happy. Whatever you want to do with your life, that's fine by me. But if I did decide to say, India Willoughby, you are a man, there is nothing she can do about it. But she is now claiming, she is now, because the police said no criminal threshold has been reached here, quite rightly. She is now claiming that when she reported J.K. Rowling to Northumbria police, they recorded it as a non hate, non-crime hate incident. I mean, this is just not even a thing. A non-crime hate incident just means nothing, yeah. but they, it? But they can't do it. Legally, they should not have just done it. Ridiculous. Because it is not a hate incident. Certainly not a crime. Sorry, but... So, uh, wind, uh, India, wind your neck in. You lost this one, OK? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is just this whole argument over, the, you know, men calling themselves women, pronouns, a lot of it. Constant obsession with language, whether it's race or whether it's what's Islamophobia. Can we just focus on de dealing with the fact that the country is in a big mess. And also, can I just point out that Shania Twain was massively ahead of her time, wasn't she, with that man? I feel like a woman. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, I t but the point is, she knew, uh, what I Shania. feel, I think everybody should be allowed to live their lives in, in exactly what way makes them happy as long as they don't harm anyone else. Yeah. So Derek, by all means, India, by weekend, all means, India, it. you live as a trans woman. Uh, I'll treat you as a woman. I'll call you she and he. Uh, she and no. <laughs> Aha, she's Freudian, she and her and all that. But don't tell me uh, that I have to accept a biological untruth. And that is that no. you are not biologically male because you are, and it is not a crime to say so. This next story, I think, is really, really important. Very, very important. Kind of similar. The NHS, yeah, on the same theme, the NHS has finally saw, seen the light and they're banning puberty blockers for children. This is so important. Uh, what we need now to happen is for the private sector to also follow suit. There's going to be some sort of potential medical trial kicking off to see what hormone blockers do. But frankly, after the Tavistock Clinic was under review by Dr. Hilary Cass back in 2022, she warned that these horrible experimental medicines designed to stop young people from going through changes into adulthood permanently disrupt brain development, lock in children to an irreversible, life-altering path of cross-sex hormone treatment. No one knows the impact of these yeah. drugs. Once you've blocked your puberty, you can't then at the age of 25 go, oh, I fancy that puberty and be 10 years younger and to not have messed up everything from my fertility to my mental health to possibly loads of other parts of my body. This was 
awful child abuse. They should never have been given these drugs to minors. So, minors should never have been allowed to make these decisions. Yeah, this sure. is absolutely I agree, right. I agree with you. And these people have gone through these puberty blockers. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> by this time, they, they will be suing the government and well, they will I'm be telling suing you, yeah, this the is, medical This will open the door this. to a whole slew of legal actions from mm -hmm. kids whose lives have been ruined by these puberty blockers. I live quite near the Tavistock Clinic for uh, gender dys dysphoria kids. Uh, and you know what uh, the locals call that place? What? Frankenstein's Castle. <laughs> uh, and the question has to be, since the NHS has now made this correct decision to stop mm. prescribing these life-changing drugs, potentially life-ruining drugs to children, why did they do it in the first place? Yeah. Why have they been doing it alarming? until now? <clears throat> what's alarming is, you know, back in the day, this Tavistock Gender Clinic used to have about 200-odd patients a year. It sort of exploded to 3,000. And rather the government going, this is weird. What are children being brainwashed with online to suddenly think they need to be a different gender? They've gone, that Tavistock, mm, let's make 300 more of those around the country because all of a sudden, 50% of children think they were born in the wrong body instead of going, ooh, the fact that 50% of children think they're born in the wrong body is frankly extremely disturbing and we're messing up our kids. Yeah. So this is a good first step, but it's not going far enough. We need to look into this phenomenon and stop it in its tracks. And ask why grown adults, uh, many of whom were doctors, sat down with eight-year-old kids to discuss their gender dysphoria. Yeah. Uh, Eight-year-old kids, you know, it's like mums, oh, my, yeah. my, my daughter keeps climbing trees. Well, obviously it wants to be a man. Uh, yeah. Let's give her some puberty blockers. I mean, I mean gender it's dysphoria, ridiculous. Gender dysphoria is a real condition. People do yeah, yeah, suffer I agree. and they need to well have played. whatever help yeah. that they need to have if they have gender dysphoria. And if they choose to go down a medical route, fantastic, and we should support them. But what we cannot have is a record number of kids suddenly thinking they've got this condition yeah. when they probably I, don't. I agree. Uh, anyway, more of that on close talk later, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, uh, let's, let's finish on a very a nice story. Paul O'Grady, a lovely man. I, I knew him. Not well, but I knew him. Uh, lovely bloke. You know all bloke. The, the sort of like celebs with well, dogs, well, well, we, we, Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was bombed with celebrities over our love of dogs. Paul O'Grady, no one loved dogs more than Paul. Uh, you know, made that uh, Battersea Dogs Home series. He's that, he had a £15.5 million fortune. He's left 775000 to animal charities, including Battersea Dogs Home. Uh, but I like this. He's also set aside £125,000 to look after his own dogs. Yeah. Nancy, Arthur, uh, Conchita... Uh, for Eddie and Sausage with specific instructions <laughs> written out I love how, that. on how to treat each one of them. Can I just say, I really like the fact he's got a dog called Sausage, or had a dog called Sausage. Yeah. That's a great name for a dog. Yeah, he had a very famous dog called Buster who was always on his chat show once. I once went to a dinner party, sat opposite uh, Paul with Buster, and I, I couldn't I couldn't speak. See, I was starstruck. Look at you and your starstruck. doggy celeb so Anyway, we better finish. Sadly, Alex, we've come to the end of this show. Thank you for tuning in. Do, of course, join us a bit later at 1 p.m. for You Know What's cross Coming Up. Cross Talk. Cross Will you help me brew a next? Flying Cross Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from King City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <missing. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would nice 